Good morning. Hello, Servet. Good morning. Am I early? No, no, you're out of time. How are you? <clears throat> Fine. How are you, Ain? Yeah, okay. Can't complain, really. Did you just wake up or not? Pretty much. No. <laughs> Maybe half an hour ago, so yeah, still suffering from this um, throat problem, um, but it's getting better, you know. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's all right, it's better than the weekend, definitely. Uh, Rafa, hello, Rafa, good morning to you, too. Good morning, Chicho. Good morning. How are you? With with a cold, I have a cold. Oh, a cold. you oh. sound like you got a cold. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm actually coming down. You know, first yeah. I had a, I had a sore throat for a, like a few days, half a week at least, and now I'm coming down. I was coughing all night, <laughs> so I think I'm going to be coming down with a flu, definitely. Yeah, yesterday I began with uh, just yesterday before yesterday. I don't know what you what you say. How? Yeah, the the day before yesterday. The day before yesterday, I. I began with a throat sore, like mm. you, and yesterday I have a, my nose <coughs> with um I don't know, with a lot of um, I don't know the name because it's not constipation. Constipation is in Spanish, but this is a false friend. This is another mm -hmm. a lot of infl inflammation on my nose and uh, co coughing, and today I am. Uh, almost with fever. <laughs> Be careful. Oh no! So you almost had fever. Fever, <laughs> almost. I, I am. I think I'm getting better, but I, I couldn't go to to work. Um, oh. it's, well, it's, <coughs> it's so so disgusting. Ah mm. uh, well, it's really good to see that you're you know, willing to learn still. Um, yeah, are you on medication? Yeah, with with m yeah. normal medication, but I I hope I get better. Talking yeah, well, we wish you. <laughs> <laughs> well, wish you all the best. Hopefully, uh, Thank you can you. recover. We wish you a quick recovery. And um, yeah, um, yeah, I feel the same. You know, sometimes I get this itchy throat and I have to cough. With I can't control it. Uh, happened yesterday in one of my classes, and I just had to pause. And um, and the students didn't weren't sure what was going on, and I asked them to read to read on. So I don't know if it happens again today. You know what the problem is? I'm probably coughing my my life away. Um, you know when you get you get a cold and you have a sore throat, and sometimes your throat just itches and you cannot control it, and you have to cough for like half a minute or something. But anyways. All right, and Heidi, hello Heidi, good afternoon to you. Hello, good good afternoon. Konbawa. 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 Hi, Genki desu. Konbawa. Tottemo Genki desu. Hi, yoku dekimashita. Good. Domo arigato. <laughs> oh, Rafael also speaks. A little, two words. Konnichiwa, no more, 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 no Good morning. Dobro jutro. Dobro jutro. Dobro jutro. Oh, so difficult. Mm. And the the J the J is pronounced like a Y in English. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's similar in Spanish or not? The J is like like a H, isn't it? In Spanish. I think it's very similar. Jutro. Jutro, yeah. Dobro jutro. Jutro, yeah. Mm, yeah, that's it. You got Dobro. it. Dobro, dobro, jutro. Yeah, it means good morning. Oh. Sounds and a bit Russian, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, ha it has. Yeah, it has Russian influence. Like, for example, even if you say goodbye, you say dovidzhenia. 
uh, and they said the same, uh, and same with Polish, I think, similar to Polish. Uh, like I said, it, because it's a Slav Slav language, but nevertheless, we do have um, Arabic, uh, Turkish influenced. You know, so Merhaba, we say Merhaba as well, uh, as in like hello. Um, uh, yeah. So um, yeah. And um, yeah, another one maybe you might want to remember. This is very easy. How are you? Kakosi. Mm -hmm. Kakosi. 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 Yeah. It sounds Japanese, doesn't it? Yeah. Kakosi. Kakosi. Is that what it means in, 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 in Japanese? Kakosi. Kakosi. Oh, I knew it would mean something because it sounds so <laughs> Japanese. Uh, talking uh, about Japanese, we have another Japanese student, Sue. Hello, welcome. Good afternoon, Sue. Oh, hello. Good afternoon, Alan. Hi, how are you? Everybody. Yeah, I'm fine. Yes, konbanwa, welcome. Ah, konbanwa, well. <laughs> how are you? Good. Totemo <laughs> genki Wow. Ah, who is speaking? Alain? Alain is speaking? No, that was Servet. Servet is half Japanese. <laughs> ah, oh. I'm half Japanese. Good, good. Good Japanese. But, yeah, I didn't Japanese. accept me, but hopefully you will accept me as a half Japanese person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, uh, yeah, Sue was in my class yesterday. I didn't get a chance to... Um, Get to know you much, Sue. But maybe now we can, um, you know, um, get to know each other a bit more, so you can tell us something about yourself. Okay. I don't know. Have you met the others yet? Have you met Sabed, Heidi, and Rafa? Yeah, I know Heidi. Mm -hmm. She's Japanese, so I know her. Okay, but Rafa and Sabed, you haven't. Um, okay, just tell tell us something briefly about you, and then um, uh, I'll do the same, and you know, Sabed and Rafa can, can do the same as well. Myself? Yeah. Uh, uh, hi, everybody. I'm uh, Tsu from Japanese. Um, I'm a housewife with three children. And I've been mm, studying English more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. But I have problem speaking. So I like to mm, improve my uh, conversation skills more. So please help me. Mm. <laughs> Excellent. We'll be more than happy to help you. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for thank the introduction. You. And welcome. I don't know how long have you been with Colingo? When did you join? Oh, um, this is uh, I I joined three or four days ago. Ah, so you knew. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but I know already. I knew already. Mm -hmm. I had your lesson one time. Mm -hmm. This is second lesson. Yes. Excellent. Okay. All right. So, Rafa, tell us something about yourself. Hello. Nice to meet you, Sue. Hello. Nice Hello. to meet you. Yeah. I'm Rafa. I'm from Spain in, in Europe. Spain. Uh, oh. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to learn English. For also for a while, but um, the most interesting place I ever seen is Caligo. You could you could join wherever you want, whenever you could, and um, also there are interesting classes. And I'm talking with my mates, with Sabat and Hyde, and also with the teacher. I recommend mm -hmm. you oh, join us you. deeply. <laughs> Thank you for introducing me. Thank you. Arigato. Awesome. Domo arigato. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much, Rafa. And you know Heidi already, so we'll skip Heidi. And uh, Servet. Yes. Hello. Komawa. Welcome to Koyengo. Uh, I'm Servet hello. from Turkey. Uh, I met, I came across Koyengo, I guess, one year ago or so. Since this time, 
I've been with Coding Go studying English for career purposes. For now, because this is my occupation pretty much. Uh, I also claim to be half Japanese, but I haven't ex been accepted yet. I need to work harder, I guess. So that's pretty much it, my life. Welcome again. Mm. Maybe if you get married to a Japanese lady, you'll be accepted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's the next step. Sorry. What's your name the again? Uh, plan, plan B. Uh, sorry? You can call Sarvet S. Sarvet S. E. R. Sarvet, right? Yes, right. Sarvet, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Okay, so who would like to do my introduction? I'm sick of talking about myself, so let's see if one of, one of the other three students can talk about me. Heidi, since Heidi didn't introduce herself, um, I introduce you. Yeah, good point. Heidi, would you like to say something about myself? Okay, my name is Heidi from Japan. Nice to see you again. Mm -hmm. You need to say something about me. <laughs> oh. oh, he yeah. is a... Uh, I forgot. <laughs> he you is forgot? Uh, <laughs> Australian. Yes. He has a son, three years old. Mm -hmm. Now he's living in Britain, England. Uh, he has three... Yes, old, the three year son. old son. Yeah, oh. and a beautiful wife. Ah. Mm. Beautiful and a funny wife. <laughs> funny, funny life? Funny, beautiful and funny life. Yeah, wife. Ah. I envy him. <laughs> yeah. Three year old son. Nice. Very yeah. cute. And a cat. <laughs> White cat. Oh, cat. Also, Takyan. Okay. She was actually sitting on my lap here for about 10 minutes and she left. You guys couldn't see, I didn't want to show you until it was the right time, but she left, yeah. It's a white cat, lovely cat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Heidi? <laughs> Before he was teaching English in Egypt. <laughs> in Egypt? Wow, yeah. yes. what a traveler. And he <laughs> lived in Germany once. He can speak oh, German. Germany and oh. Muslim, English, Muslim. and uh, Russian, mm -hmm. Japanese, French. <laughs> no. Spanish. <laughs> You're exaggerating. He's a polyglot. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a few words, but definitely not fluently. <laughs> I'm not as good as you guys. You guys speak better than me. His son is also so cute, you see. He comes sometimes and says, hello, he's so friendly, so talkative son. You know. mm. Yeah, he just woke up as well. He's now watching his cartoons. Also, if I uh, remember yeah. properly, he's a very good f football player, and uh, he enjoyed the most um, talking about fo uh, football, soccer, um, he was. Um, he he wants. I think he would like to continue playing soccer yes. in his life. Good. Well done. When he watches soccer, he likes screaming. <laughs> Do I? Screaming. <laughs> Sakina says so. Sakina says when you watch, you are so loud. <laughs> Actually, I did scream the last time Arsenal played, yeah. And my son was screaming with me. Arsenal! Arsenal! Yeah, we were cheering for them. Um, but all within, within control, within, um, you know. And also, uh, um, he, he doesn't like to tell to people, but he's a hooligan from <laughs> the Liverpool. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, secretly I'm a hooligan uh, and I support Liverpool. Yeah. Oh, never, never. I have a few. I have a few close friends uh, that are really fanatical 
um, Liverpool supporters. Um, but no, not me. Okay, that's good, guys. You've done well. Excellent. So there you go, Sue. Now you know a bit about every one of us. Welcome to the club. You know, nice to have you. And um, yeah, so let's start. History and culture will be our topic for today, or for this lesson. And um, we'll focus a little bit on grammar. Not too much, though, because it's a high intermediate class, so more discussion. Uh, however, models of deduction, uh, you know, will be the grammar skill that we will try to incorporate, you know, in our discussion. So, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to give you a scenario. Let's say for the next two minutes, let's just discuss this little scenario as a warm up. Um, you're meeting a friend, okay, at the cinema to watch a movie. Okay, so you're going out to watch a movie. But after a while, they don't turn up. Your friend, he or she, doesn't turn up. So what do you think happened? <clears throat> he can be, she can be kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> Very extreme thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she 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 could have been kidnapped. kidnapped yeah. But the real story is he didn't pay his electricity bill um, oh. because he was running of money. And the electricity company turned down, turned off the all the sure. the whole electricity. Uh, um, Mm. He couldn't see the film, if I heard properly. I see. Okay. Well, actually, they're meeting at the cinema, but it's okay. Maybe the... The company uh, of the, co the, of the com movie theater. <laughs> ah, I see. Maybe he was already inside, and then he got stuck inside. Yeah, that's cool imagination. <laughs> Very creative. Okay. What else could have happened? She you could have. Sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. She could have been stuck in traffic. <clears throat> yes. Good. Very common. She could have lost her contact lens. She is looking for her contact lens in that scene. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. That's also very common, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should go inside and have a have a look. Help her. That would be that would be really. Um, imagine there's something really small. Maybe your I don't know the, the girl's earring dropped, or something really small but valuable, and you will never find it, you know. And what if it drops? Because you know the way you're sitting in the cinema, it sort of goes down, you know. Every seat goes down. So maybe it's behind another seat in front of you, and then how are you going to get to it? You can't lift the seat. So it will be very painful. Yeah. So many things could have happened. Yeah. Um, you know, basically, we can say, and we'll move straight into the grammar. Um, so you might say, if you're really, really sure, you know, you say must. So, you know, she or he must have forgotten because uh, maybe you got a text message or something uh, or what else what other models could we use so you've already used could you mentioned could so must and what's the other two that's she more might have, she might have found handsome guy <laughs> Yeah, she, she might have found what? She is still talking with him. Oh, a handsome man. Handsome man. <laughs> yes, maybe she found somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, so might have. Might or may. Yeah, might or may. Excellent. So I'll screen share this with you and now we can have a look at it. Absolutely. So so <clears throat> these models of deduction tell us how likely it seems that something happened. 
Yeah. So, for example, if you wake up, you know, and you look outside your window in the morning, and you look every, you see that everything is wet. The streets are wet. You know, obviously you're gonna say it must have rained last night. Yeah, because <clears throat> that's evidence right there because everything is wet. You're not gonna say it could have rained. It definitely rained because everything's wet. <coughs> okay, so then, um, so these there are basically three, three to four, uh, three categories. So the first one would be ninety-five percent, right, <coughs> which is the highest, most likely. Uh, you use must, and then we have fifty percent, which is may or might. So we don't know. Either way, it could have happened, you know, may or might. And then when it's uh, least likely that something happened, then you use could. So it's 25%. Okay. <clears throat> Servet, can you read from here, please? Okay. I got three phone calls from a new phone number. It must be my mother. She got a new cell phone. I think Jenny might like me. She might have been the one who sent me the note. Jack did not study at all for the test. He could have passed, but probably he did not. More? Excellent, yeah. Actually, we'll get now. So these are examples given to us, yeah? So one with must, one with might, and one with could. Okay, the first one <coughs> we have we use must mainly because she has a <coughs> like proof, you know, evidence. That's usually when you know and you that you can use must. Uh, this basically what gives it away. Okay, and the other ones when you have slight inclination or you have <coughs> You're so, sort of sure, but not totally sure. So then we use might or, my, or may. And could, you know, you're not really sure, so you just said could have passed. You know, anything could have happened. Yeah. <clears throat> so secondly, okay, um, Heidi, let's see if you mm -hmm. can read this, please. What? Can you read from... Um, um, second. Could yeah. you... Could you make letters a little bigger? Oh, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. Okay, second. Uh, there are a few wait. Uh, oh, <laughs> very big. Is that too big now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. There are a few ways to fr form sentences with a uh, oh, <laughs> with models of uh, deduction. You can form a sentence to identify the situation. Construction, subject, plus model, plus B, plus noun. That car might be the new Toyota sports car. Uh, this song could be the new uh, gold play, cold play. Mm. Okay, form. thank you. <clears throat> yes, let's just uh, cover this now. So basically here, what are we, what are we saying here? So. There are ways to form these sentences, yeah, with models of deduction. So one would be to identify, or which deals with identity, which uh, Heidi just read so um, clearly. So basically, <clears throat> when we see something or hear something, anything to do with our senses, really, um, this is called identity or to identify the situation. So here. We're talking about a Toyota sports car. So somebody is seeing it from the distance and say, oh, that car might be the new Toyota sports car. Yeah, you see it from distance. And you know it's been highly talked about and whatnot. And it looks like it. And then uh, you hear a song on the radio. And say, oh, this song could be the new Coldplay. It's the first time you're hearing it, but you can recognize the voice, perhaps, of the singer. So he's saying this could be. Oh, sorry, yeah, this could be the new Coldplay. But if you're really sure and you're a big fan of Coldplay, you say, oh, this must be their new song. 
Yeah. Okay, then um, Rafa, can you read the next, please? <clears throat> Rafa, can you hear me? Okay, maybe he's gone off his chair. Well, we'll get Sue to read. But actually, Virginia has joined us. Hello, Virginia. Hi, how are you? Hello, teacher. I'm great. Thank you. And you? Good. Yes, nice to meet you. Um, nice. <clears throat> we're just going through the grammar of models of deduction. Okay, so after this we'll get into the the article. So um, welcome to class. So we'll just uh, continue from here. All right. Um, so Sue, can you read on please? <clears throat> uh, to form sentences when judging the situation. Construction, subject, he, they, tom, model, B op opinion. Continue? Yep. It's two, two sentences here. Yeah. Uh, you mm -hmm. work for the government. That must be boring. The boss wants to talk to you. That could be bad. Mm, excellent. Okay. Yep, that's good. Thank you. So here we have another <clears throat> situation where we're judging the situation. So we're talking about um, let me give you your opinion. Yeah. So also, the construction is the same, <clears throat> but only at the end we give an opinion. Okay, so you work for the government. Yeah, there's a question mark. That must be boring. Yeah, because you know usually people think that whoever works for the government is a boring job. So that must be boring. So he's pretty convinced that it's a boring job. Uh, or he might say, "Oh, you teach." At Colingo, that must be great, yeah. <laughs> or you, um, you've joined Colingo, that's awesome, yeah. That must be awesome, you know, <clears throat> because you know that you know the uh, students are happy. Yeah. Or the boss wants to talk to you, that could be bad, yeah. So here, again, the boss wants to talk to you. To the other person says, um, that could be bad. He doesn't know, but you know, the boss is calling you. It could be a bad thing, but could also be a good thing. So he doesn't know. So first we have identity, yeah, uh, to identify the situation. And then we have judging this uh, situation, giving your opinion about the situation. And thirdly, <coughs> when you're talking about past events. Okay, here uh, the, uh, the <coughs> construction will be um, same as above. So subject plus the model, and then we have, oh, we add have, and the past participle. Okay, so like we actually started in the beginning, you know, when I asked you what happened to your friend that left you at the cinema, didn't come to the cinema, you might say, uh, oh, well, they could have. Uh, you know, they could have forgotten. Could have forgotten. Yeah, forgotten is in the past participle. Or the house burned down. Someone could have left a candle burning. Okay. John isn't here. He may have stayed Teacher. home today. Yes? Teacher, can I question to you? Yes, please. Uh, Please, what's burn it down? Or oh, burn down. Um, yeah, the, there was a fire in the house, basically. You know, there, there was a fire in the house, so the house burned down. Yeah, the, the, fi uh, the house caught fire, and it, it burned down. So basically, you know when, when there's a fire in the house, after a short while, the whole house is burning mm -hmm. and basically it collapses, it goes down. So the whole house burned down. From the top to the bottom, mm -hmm. the whole house was on fire. Ah, okay. 
Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. All right. So then, moving on, we can also form them in negative sentences uh, with can't or couldn't. Yeah. So this car looks cheap. It can't be the new BMW. Can't be the new Beamer. Yeah. Uh, or uh, you work for Tom Cruise, that can't be boring. So again, the first one, we're dealing with what situation? Remember our three situations? Which one is this representing? Servet. Yes. <laughs> what situation does this represent? Impossible things, something. Uh -uh. It can't be the B new BMW. There is no, there is no like possibility. Yeah, but are we dealing with are we dealing with um, like judging things, like with opinion, giving opinion, or are we talking about identity, or is it past uh, past tense, like a past event? Op opinion. Ah. Ah, uh, opinion. You sure? According to identity, opinion. Mm, yeah, opinion based on identity. Ah, that's better. Yeah, yeah. So it's a combination of both, isn't it? <clears throat> so someone's giving the opinion based on the, um, you know, identity. So they're looking at a car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, okay, this car looks cheap. Yeah. And they won't be able to give the opinion without having look without uh, you know uh, gazing over this car, without looking at the car. So yeah. um, identity has to do with it. So then they're saying it can't be the new BMW because it looks cheap. Then you work for Tom Cruise, or you work for Tom Cruise, that can't be boring. So this one is opinion, purely opinion, yeah. Just like before, you work for the government, that must be boring. But here only we're using the negative, yeah. That can't be boring. Or you could say that must be awesome, or that must that that must be exciting, and so on. But if you want to use a negative, then you use the opposite of what you think it is. And then who left the candle burning? It couldn't have been Tom. Oh, sorry, it couldn't have been Tony because he hates candles. It couldn't have been. Yeah, so negative and in the past, past uh, tense. I mean, using the past participle here. <clears throat> okay, guys. So that's those. Are there any questions you'd like to ask? No. Well, we're going through the grammar a fair bit. Could you, yeah. could you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Earlier I couldn't hear you. I don't know what happened. Yeah, sorry. I think my sad headphones is broken and I need to change it. Thank you. Oh, no. Okay. All right, so let's see. Let's do the article. Here is the link. I'm going to give you the link in the chat so you can see. Um, the article in your own window, if you like to open it. So we're talking about ancient Greece. Right? So, ancient Greece was the first civilization in Europe. It developed around the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, many powerful cities, great, uh, great thinkers and scientists emerged in ancient Greece uh, and it was also the birthplace of democracy. Ah. Mm -hmm. So let's read the history. Would, would you guys like to read? Practice your reading a bit. Yes. Mm, yes. Yeah, and then I can I can uh, you know correct you if you like and uh, yes. make any correction. Okay, so let's start with Servet from the left. So history. History. Aegean civilized civilization. Civilizations. Yeah. Civilization in the Eastern Mediterranean began at about two, three thousand BC. 
on the island of Crete. The Minoans were great sailors who became rich through trading. At about 1500 BC, Mycenae, a powerful town on the southern Greek mainland, conquered and took control of Crete. Three centuries later, the Dorians invaded Greece from the north and drove the Mediterranean off to Asia. Excellent. Good, good reading. Um, okay, everything was fine. Um, basically, well, I think <coughs> you put, oh, bless you. Uh, this is, I think, Crete. That pronounces Crete. Bump correct. Crete. Um, Crete, yeah. And the rest is fine. So also try to focus and listen um, to the actual text, guys. Yeah, don't just focus on the reading and then you don't understand any of it. So. Um, yeah, focus also on the focus and try to understand. So, thank you, Servet. So, Heidi, you're next. Can you read for yep. me, please? City states after 1000 BC, Dorian and Ronian, who settled in the eastern part of Greece, started to build large cities. These cities had their own government their own um, armies and were independent. The two most powerful city-states were uh, Sparta and Athens. Sparta was the strongest and most powerful city-state with many soldiers and a huge army. It was, it was only interested in the fighting world. Sparta uh, united surroundings uh, village, uh, surrounding villages and uh, sent armies to conquer its neighbors, uh, neighbors and uh, bring back slaves. Athens, on the other side, uh, con concentrated on trade, science and other fields. It was the first city to form a democratic government. Mm, excellent. Well read, Heidi, thank you. <coughs> Yeah, so no major corrections here. Yeah? Everything seemed to be intact. So, yeah, they mentioned Sparta and Athens, the two most powerful states or city-states of ancient Greece. And this is the, the map or their location. Yeah, I don't know. Have you seen that movie, 300? Yes. This, this is Sparta. Yes. With the Gerard Butt line, it's, yeah, it was quite good, yeah. It's, it's quite graphic, though. It's a very graphic movie. Uh, a lot of fighting and, um, you know, blood being shed. Uh, well, yeah, interesting to see. I like these historical movies, you know. So, yeah. So, yeah, you can see there's a lot of islands that, that you know, Greece has. Quite interesting, you know. And there's Servet. Can you see me? I'm waving at you. Can you see the arrow? Look, in the, look outside the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is where Istanbul is, by the way. See, I'm just waving my, my mouse cursor at, at uh, Servet. But he can't see me. I don't know what's, what's wrong. Your sky, is, your sky must be misty. Is it cloudy? No, it is pretty clear. OK. All right, so let's keep going. Um, all right, so Rafa, you're next. Can you hear me, Rafa? Yeah. Okay, so Sorry. continue. Mm -hmm. From Persian Wars. Yes, please, yeah. At about 500 BC, the Persian Empire under Darius the first invaded yes. many <laughs> Greek cities on the Asian coast. By 419 BC, the Persians attacked the Greek mainland. Greek armies under Spartan leadership fought back and defeated, defeated the Persians. Mm. Peloponnesian War. Under the rule of Pericles, Athens had become the most powerful city-state 
and controlled most of the eastern part of Greece. Pericles wanted, wanted to make Athens a beautiful city with many temples. Uh, philosophy and general knowledge became important. Sparta, though that attempt would become too powerful. In 431 BC, it began a war against Athens. Excellent. <clears throat> Very well read. Well done, uh, Rafa. Thank you. Yeah, I don't see any mistakes. Uh, maybe up part those one uh, there was one word which I thought I made it uh, philosophy yeah philosophy I thought you I heard you say philosophy yeah philosophy that's okay uh, other than that it's good well read so here we spoke about the Persian wars which they had you know with the Persians and then um, uh, Pelop uh, Peloponnesian, Peloponnesian War, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so let's continue. Um, Sue, can you continue from here, please? In, uh, okay. uh, in 430 BC, a plague broke out in Athens and killed a third of its population. After becoming weaker and weaker, it finally surrounded to the Spartan army. Sparta, uh, however, dominated Greece for only 30 years. Then it was defeated by another powerful city, Thebes. Thebes. Yeah. Thebes. Yeah. Mm, excellent. Okay. <clears throat> um, how much more do we have? Let me just see. It's quite a fair bit. So, um, okay, can you continue from the Sidonian rule? Yeah, continue soon. Okay, oh, sorry. Macedonian, me, 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 sorry, Macedonian rule. Yeah, that's correct, as, Macedonian. Okay, okay. Uh, as Greek city states became weaker, Macedonian. A kingdom to the north of Greece grew stronger and stronger after King Philip II has conquered all of Greece, his son. Alexander came to power in 336 BC. He set out to conquer Persia and got as far east as India. Alexander the Great spread Greek ideas and the Greek way of life throughout Western Asia and the Middle East. Mm, Alexander excellent. did not... Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. You finish, finish the last sentence. Here, go ahead. I see. Yes, go on. Yeah, you can finish. Sue? Yeah. Okay. Uh, go on, uh, Alexander. Continue? Yeah, continue. Yeah. Alexander, uh, Alexander did not name... Uh, Successor to his empire, after his death, many generals fought for power, and his empire broke up into many kingdoms. Mm, excellent, well read. There are no major corrections. Um, yeah, so the Macedonian rule had a great impact on Greece, uh, especially with Alexander the Great, as he is known. And this is a picture of him. So Macedonia was a part of Greece or another country? Mm, it, it, it's, it's a country by itself now, but it, it's not originally Greece. It, it became a part of Greece when they when they conquered, right? Like it says here. Yeah. Uh, it's a kingdom to the north of Greece, so it wasn't really part of Greece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it became part of it because they sort of conquered it. Yeah, like I said, after King Philip II had conquered all of Greece, so they conquered Greece, and then his son Alexander, who was known as Alexander the Great, he just you know with his armies uh, he went and spread throughout the whole of uh, Asia pretty much, you know, and went as far as India. So Alexander the Great was actually Macedonian. 
yes, yes. But then the Greeks will say some say otherwise. Oh no, he was actually Greek and all that. There's a whole uh, you know debate going on about that. But anyways, as we know, <laughs> I think the history says that you know, at least here, that he's a son of King Philip II, yeah. who was the Macedonian king. All right. So uh, and finally, we'll give Virginia a chance to read. So Virginia, can you read from here, please? Yes. Roma uh, Broly in 140 BC, Rome took over Greece and the city states. They stayed under Roma Broly until 395. AD and then became part of, part of the Byzantine Empire. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's pretty good. Continue. Well done. Uh, I think we'll have to uh, pick it up because we're running out of time. So I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish it now from now on, and because uh, we're running out of time. Uh, but that's good. Well read. Um, very precise reading. Uh, thank you, Virginia. And thank you to all of okay. you for, for reading. So I'll continue now, guys. So keep paying attention, and uh, then we'll do a bit of discussion. So daily life in ancient Greece. Men were the heads of most Greek families. Richer families had slaves who were commanded by the wives. They had to look after the children and, and uh, the household work. Most Greek families arranged weddings for their children. Women usually married at an early age, men much later. In ancient Greece, society was made up of citizens and non-citizens. Citizens were free men and noblemen. They owned land and took part in government. Non-citizens were women, slaves, and serfs. Only citizens received education. Teachers in Athens taught general subjects like music, writing, mathematics, and reading. They also concentrated on physical exercise like running, jumping, and wrestling. Education in Sparta was different. Boys were sent to military schools so that they could become good soldiers. Greek people ate food made of grains, mostly wheat and barley. Bread was the main type of food. They ate fish and eggs, protein, and consumed vegetables and fruit. Greek men and women wore garments made of linen and wool, or wool uh, that hung down to their knees. They also wore a belt around their waist. A woman's garment usually covered her whole legs down to her ankles. Houses were small in ancient Greece. Because of the mild climate, many things were kept outside the house. All families lived in houses made of dried bricks and floors made of dried and hard mud. Wealthy families had stone floors and separate rooms for cooking, eating, and sleeping. Philosophy, Science, and Arts Ancient Greece became famous for its great thinkers and philosophers. Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle um, were great thinkers who looked for logical explanations of everyday things. Many people in Greece, however, did not believe in what philosophers had to say. In 399 BC, Socrates uh, was sentenced to death because of his teachings and because he did not believe in Greek gods. Famous playwrights and poets wrote works that are still performed in theaters today. Architects designed beautiful build buildings. Scientists explored medicine, physics, biology, and mathematics. They observed nature and also carried out experiments. Religion. People in ancient Greece believed in many gods. On one hand, <coughs> gods and goddesses were like normal people who showed feelings, but on the other hand, they possessed abilities that humans didn't. They could foretell the future and live forever. Normal people thought that gods and goddesses watched them and observed what they did in everyday life. 
They spoke to the people through oracles, holy places where priests had contact with gods. The most important oracle was at Delphi. Zeus was the most important god. Uh, he and his wife Hera uh, lived on Mount Olympus. Other gods and goddesses included uh, Aphrodite, the goddess of love, Eros, god of love, Apollo, the god of light, Ares, the god of war, Athena, the goddess of wisdom. So this is where Mount Olympus is located. So Sparta here, Athens summer here. <clears throat> And finally, we have democracy and politics. The so the idea of democracy, uh, which means government by the people, came from ancient Greece. Athens was the first city to set up a democratic government. All free men were members who passed laws and were also allowed to serve on a jury. Um, of the 30,000 citizens in Athens, 500 were chosen each year to help run the city. They received a small amount of money because they could not continue their normal work. Oh. So that's that, guys. Right, so any questions on vocabulary or anything else? Uh, Oracle. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> Oracle. Oracle is relative, if I may. Well, a place where you go to 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 know anything about the future mm. or give advice from weeks or yeah, could be like this. Yeah, oracles are like like priests almost, or are, are, you know, female priests, like priestess, acting as a as a medium, yeah, so, you know, through whom advice or prophecy was, uh, you know, sought, you know, so basically, you work, if you want to reach God, or especially in those times, the, the ancient Egyptian gods, mm -hmm. you have to work through him or her, so you have to speak to them, to an oracle, in order to, uh, you know, get a favor from God or whatever. Okay. okay. Yes, anyone else want to say anything? Virginia, did you want to say something? Uh, uh, yes, I, my question is uh, about the word uh, this text. text. Uh, uh, down, please, the, the um, text. Can you can you type it? Yeah. Can you type it in the, more, in the chat, more. please? Yes, passed, passed the laws. Passed the laws. Passed the laws. Above. Oh, right, right, right. Who passed Above. the laws? Okay, let's have a look here. I think passed you mentioned the laws. it. Yeah, just a second. What is this? Okay, here it is. <clears throat> Somebody who passes a law is to make a law or rule that others must keep. So basically, uh, to make a law, you know, to make a rule mm -hmm. in the government. That's what it means. Okay. That's what it means. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. yeah? uh -huh. okay. okay, good. Understand. Okay. So any other words, guys? Thank you. You're welcome. The more other words, um, let's discuss it. Uh, so tell me, what do you think about this? You know, their daily life, you know, how they lived, or how they ran the government, you know. Anything that catches your interest? What's interesting to you? I think, uh, if I may, well, as the article said, uh, the foundations of the Occident, the Western uh, civilization is made in Greece, and everything comes 
from Greece, um, the democracy, also philosophy, all kind of science, or mm. science. Uh, also, the Greece people from ancient times was very clever. They they uh, made a lot of nice buildings you can find everywhere, beautiful statues, beautiful um, architecture, um, many things come from there. At least in Europe, Europe has a lot of influence from Greece. Uh, later, uh, Roman Empire also have the same influence from Greece. Uh, from that time to nowadays, we have a lot of similarities between uh, Greece, ancient people, and us. The democracy is one of the most important uh, philosophy, as the article said. Uh, everything is related to to the foundations of the civilization, the occidental. I don't know if the occidental civilization is made in Greece, and also godness. And God is very similar. The representation, for example, in the Catholic temples about God, uh, the Christian God, God mm -hmm. is very similar to Zeus, to Zeus, uh, mm -hmm. the position of the his man, his hand, also he, uh, he's uh, represented and painting in a throne uh, over the world, uh, is very similar to the Christian Jehovah, and there are many, many similarities between these cultures, is my opinion. Yes, very good, yes. That's right. The philosophy are, and uh, they are fighting war, so I think it's a man-dominated world. I can't see any female. But uh, Socrates, uh, it said, if Socrates' wife is not Xantip, he he um, wouldn't have be the so uh, philosophy. So mm. maybe women power is very strong. Yeah, if you if you definitely if you look at here, it it talks about the women having quite a lot of um, command. See, it says yeah, richer families had slaves, right? Who were co commanded by the wives? So the wives commanded the slaves and did quite a lot of things, you know. Even though men <clears throat> were heads of the families, but still, uh, women had a lot of say, you know. They had, um, uh, you know, yeah, they were quite powerful and, and you know, respected. They also mentioned that women were citizens. Ah yes, this is one one thing. Yeah, that's right. So maybe unless they marry somebody, they weren't uh, like considered to be citizens. If you marry a maybe a nobleman, then you are a citizen. Then you have this mm. right. Maybe. Yep. Yeah, possible. So only men were considered citizens, yeah? And, um, <clears throat> and only they received education. So women just basically took care of the household, you know, the slaves and everything else. Yeah, okay, anything else, guys? No, I am it's clear. Clear. I remember the maybe some movies related to this old Greek life. Yeah. And they seem like very connected to this idea. Very similar things are written, even the, even the clothing. Yes, yes. All right. Mm, yeah, 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 definitely. I remember also from watching the movies, you know. Yeah, I, 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 ra I rather enjoy these, these movies, you know, um, when it comes to do with history and... <clears throat> um, so yeah, there's quite a lot here. I mean, there's, there's a big, it was a big 
empire had a lot of influence on the world. <clears throat> Just ancient Greek empires and Byzantine and Roman Empire, they all were uh, Greek originated or not? Were they originally Greek? You mean were they? Um, yeah, I don't know. About, I don't know about the Roman. I'm not too sure. I don't know. Um, Rafa, do you know much about this? Is there a lot of Origin from the, from the Greeks into the Romans. Teacher. Yes. Uh, sorry, but I go out. Okay, I no problem. Out now. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you too. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, bye, bye bye. Bye. Uh, bye. Colleagues. Bye. See you. Yes. Bye, business. See you later. Bye, 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 bye. Um, yeah. So I'm not too sure. There must be, you know, some relationship there, but I don't know whether it's in core, uh, you know, descendants or past on or anything like that. Yeah. I didn't dwell into that much of the history. But yeah. Okay. Anything else you'd like to mention, guys? We're gonna have to wrap it up. Okay, so um, yeah, quite interesting. And there's some more vocabulary at the bottom in case uh, you're interested. You have the link, so um, feel free to go through the vocab and um, have a look at it. So that's it. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Go and get the other thank you, everybody. See you, bye. See you next time. Bye bye. You're welcome. You. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye bye.